All right. Hello. <laughs> Don't you just love when your mouse clicks automatically and repeats <laughs> things? But hey, anyways, welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome to, to blame it on the mouse. Yeah, like, exactly. Well, <laughs> there you go. I, I thought that's a great way to look at that. Let's blame it on the mouse. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the Wisdom's Leadership uh, uh, challenge our live show that we're running in advance of our upcoming one day leadership masterclass coming up in September. We're going to get into some really cool details on that. Uh, but this is episode number two. So welcome and thank you everybody who joined us last week as well. And, and the purpose of this is really to understand the leadership challenge that we are all facing in business today, uh, you know, based amongst the chaos and, and the confusion and everything else that's going on. And how do we actually decide to manage that? And what tools, tactics, and strategies uh, do we actually need to be able to help us uh, become better leaders throughout this as well? So today I'm joined by our, our amazing Wisdoms Leadership Masterclass um, instructors, teachers, leaders. Come on, can I use the word leaders, leaders in leadership twice or more than once? Um, <laughs> anyway, I've got uh, uh, Scott Kundal, Trevor Nell, uh, Ivan Anderson, who can't join us today, Sally sorry, Sally Anderson, uh, who's with us today, Lee Harrison and Kim Adele Platt as well, all part of the amazing team that we're going to be um, talking more about leadership as we get into it. And it's meant to be a quick little short little discussion. So if you're watching this, uh, please type in any questions around the whole leadership question, the leadership challenge, what do leaders need to do differently today? Um, and we'll hopefully be able to answer that. If you're in replay, just hashtag type hashtag replay, and uh, we'll come back in and answer the questions as well. So right now, I'd love to get everybody in um, to get to know our, our speakers today. So Sally, if you'd like to to kind of get us started, um, tell us a little quick little story about yourself and then um, what, what leadership means to you and how can we apply it in this day and age? Sure. So I'm coming to you from Aotearoa, New Zealand, and I specialize in high-end leadership and the three key areas that I'm wanting to focus on today, which I think are uh, the most pertinent, uh, leaders are used to being in control. <clears throat> and due to COVID, uh, leaders have been thrown into complete uncertainty. And uh, there is a superhuman expectation placed on leaders, especially those at the highest level. So I coach billionaires and um, millionaires and politicians and uh, high-end CEOs and uh, global influencers. And we never talk about mental health at that level. It's hard enough talking about mental health in the workplace. Uh, and it's kind of like become a more of a compliance issue than something genuinely that we actually know how to navigate. So one area that I'm passionate about is uh, Houston. We have a problem. Uh, we need to support those at the highest level of leadership. Fish things from the head down, no disrespect. Uh, we have a lot of little boys and girls running businesses at a level. Um, and uh, I believe that mental health in the context of the most senior level of leadership is more prominent now than it ever has been. That's number one. Uh, number two, um, uh, traditional leadership as we know it is dead. The linear, traditional, hard skills. Um, so moving into what they used to term soft skills or feminine leadership skills, absolute bullshit. They're hardly bloody soft skills. These human skills in the linear, non-linear space um, we're now being forced into having to uh, upskill. So again, uh, your leadership development plans as they stand need to uplevel and be reinvented. Uh, you know, the whole employee assistant programs, you know, if you're just offering the same old, same old, it ain't going to cut it where we're headed. Um, so as far as um, navigating uncertainty, instead of surviving it, let's thrive with it. Uh, interested in that. You think about all the leadership coaches out there in the marketplace. Um, my key point of difference is uh, how do you sustain change, both personally and professionally? Millions of dollars to this day globally is still spent on coaches, on consultants, on uh, training off the shelf training initiatives, on off the shelf cultural change initiatives for very questionable ROI back into the business. If you're going to invest money in change, let's make sure it's sustainable. So, those are the three main areas that I dance in uh, that I'm passionate about. And obviously, once we get into the uh, Leadership Masterclass on the 23rd of September, uh, I'm the lead facilitator, so I'll be facilitating the day. My key uh, area, or my sweet spot, as it were, is live coaching. Throw anything at me, any place, anytime, anywhere, and anything. I'm a coach intuitive. 
I can shift anybody out of anything. So anything of a personal professional nature that is raised on the day, uh, there's two hours actually allocated to that particular segment. So folks, that's me. <laughs> Look forward to it. Can't hear you there, Doyle. Can't hear you, mate. <laughs> there we go. Let's try this there again. Okay. First, blame it on the mouse. Second, blame it on the, the mute little button. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. No, that's really good. I, I love your energy, and I'm so excited that you're part of this as well because uh, you've got so much to, that I can learn from, and I know that everybody else can learn from as well. So, Thank you so much for that uh, amazing introduction as well. Um, just for our audience as well, if you do have comments or questions, please type them into the, the uh, comment section or the chat box or wherever you're at. And uh, we'd love to hear from what you have to say as well and any questions too. So thank you, Sally. Lee, you're next. Let's hear a quick little rundown of you and your philosophy on leadership and what we're facing. <laughs> I, I love that. But just a quick philosophy on leadership. It's only probably the most uh, explored, researched, written about topic on the planet. But uh, don't worry, I'll do it in 30 seconds. Um, so I'm, <laughs> I'm Lee Harrison. I uh, am the CEO of Wisdoms. Uh, Wisdoms is a center for personal leadership uh, team and business development. And... Uh, and yeah, so leadership, I think, is as as Sally said, you know, it's it's by far the place of the greatest stress and pressure that we're experiencing because so much is being expected uh, when there is so much that's unknown. So life was always unpredictable. Life was always random. Uh, we were under the illusion that because we had structures and processes and things seemed to work in a certain direction for a certain period of time, uh, that we had things under control. And uh, so leadership is really making the most of what you have, whether that's resources, whether that's context, whether that's, uh, you know, the 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 people that you're working with, the results and the de expectations and demands that you have in terms of all of the various stakeholders. Uh, and I definitely think it's one of the toughest jobs that you can possibly have because you're being squeezed from all directions. Uh, and so I'm seeing certainly that leadership is under pressure, uh, and but that it's so necessary. Uh, so I think that's, you know, we, we're we crying out for leadership, I think, because most people are, whether you're in a job or not in a job, if you're running a business, uh, you are, uh, people are feeling isolated, people are feeling uh, alone, people are feeling overwhelmed. And, uh, and so we're looking for, for people to step up and say, it's okay. We'll do it. We'll we'll go this direction. This is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to help. And and, and I think people are longing for that. Yeah. No. Perfect. I, I agree completely with that. <laughs> no arguments here. Yeah. We really need to kind of understand the problem, but also offer some of the solutions as well. And and if we can learn something about being a better leader, is that going to help? Yes. One hundred percent. So thank you, Lee. Um, Trevor. Let's hear from you next, sir. Our, our wisest, well, our to... wisest Trevor. <laughs> so, so now we all understand what that smell is out there. Traditional leadership has been dead for a long time. And uh, the only people that don't understand it are those that actually can't smell themselves. And you know the old story. Uh, we're the last people to actually smell ourselves when we don't use that, that cologne. Um, and, and Sally gives us the reason why. The fish is rotting from their head down. So um, if you want to blame anyone out there and you haven't got a mouse on the mute button, uh, perhaps you've got to look in the mirror. And, and that's really what this um, leadership uh, masterclass is all about. And uh, I just really want to focus on the point, and both Lee and Sally have touched on it. I think leadership now currently is all about being able to predict the unpredictable. Uh, so if you can get that right, um, then I think you're in the game for the next five to 10 years. So how are we going to do that? Uh, and that's the point of the discussion we're going to have at the Leadership Masterclass. Perfect. Thanks, Trevor. 
Um, well, actually, you didn't say, actually I'll go back to, to Lee as well and Trevor. Tell us where you're from. Lee. All right. Well, okay. The, so the go Lee. No, go Lee. The accent gives it away. We are from Johannesburg, South Africa. So um, the and and as my husband says, you can go anywhere in the world from here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I'm also in <laughs> Joburg, South Africa. And anyway, uh, so we've got challenges of our own in South Africa, which uh, give great insight on a global scale as well. Uh, as to what can actually happen to you at the touch of a button. Last week, I was 36 years of age. Uh, and you can see the proof is in the pudding. Just look look at how I've aged in the, in the last week from our last session. <laughs> Good. Thanks, Trevor. Appreciate that. Um, Trevor's our, our resident comedian, I must say. Our, our satirical comedist, com comedist, comedian? Yes. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Scott, you're next. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, all the way from beautiful Bali. Yeah, uh, I'm Scott, uh, the non-mouth blamer, uh, which I'm com <laughs> commonly referred to. Yeah, so during the, the masterclass that's coming up, um, I'm going to be talking about the importance of leadership to be leaders to be beyond the leaders within their own colleagues. Just because your own colleagues around you at your organization go, oh, well done, you're such a such a star, great worker, it's not going to cut it. You need to be a leader that goes beyond. You need to be a leader in your industry. You need to be a leader beyond your own organization. That's really what leadership has become. Uh, it's grown beyond the, the traditional um, spheres of leadership. But really what I want to focus on today and I want to mention is the issue, the number one role of a leader right now is being able to deal with polarity. Uh, it could be polarity within your boardroom. It could be polarity within your employees, your staff, your fellow colleagues. You need to know how to handle two very, very different and very opposing views, which can become so conflicted uh, that, that it can almost become violent. And we're starting to see that happen more and more. As more and more people start getting back face to face in the opposite uh, in the offices and with it around actual physical boardroom tables, we get, uh, leaders are going to know have to know how to balance this. You need to know the difference between a victor and a victimizer within the relationships. You're going to be seeing role playing within 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 co and conflicts appearing where there used to be none. How are you going to handle that? How do you even begin to understand the psychology? of how to balance these victim-victimizer relationships. Who's the victim? Who's the victimizer? Um, how are we going to handle this kind of conflict of polarity? Uh, and I'm very blessed to be, you know, to be sharing the platform on that masterclass day with, you know, the people in this room today, um, you know, Sally Lee, Trevor, uh, and the others who are not here at the moment, you know, the Ivans, Kim Adele, et cetera. I mean, you'll be able to see how facial recognition is going to be able to handle that conflict. But guys, we have a problem. Leaders have a very, very big problem. They've never, never seen this level of polarized conflict ever before as to what's coming out now. And you need to be equipped to handle that. Mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Makes makes perfect sense. Um, so so let's get right into the kind of the, the question of the day. So, and I'd like to kind of move on from where Scott was kind of going with that. It's like, okay, we have a problem, right? We've kind of identified that throughout all the, the quick little discussions here. How do we how do leaders deal with this? So how do we deal with the polarization? How do we deal with the chaos? How do we deal with the sort of the overwhelm and the misunderstandings? Um, can each one of us give you know some specific plans or, or tactics or strategies to help us kind of overcome some of this, or at least put it into a, a you know a box or a spot that we can actually try to deal with it? Uh, who'd like to go first, Lee, Sally? Sally, oh yeah, yeah. Let's go, Sally. I knew Sally would be would be <laughs> yeah, hungry. Really. I knew it. <laughs> oh golly gosh. Um, so uh, most individuals and organisations tolerate not experiencing transformation, let alone transcendence. And the access point to unrecognisable transformation. I had somebody in my audience years ago. There's always one. He said to me, Sally, if it's up that unrecognisable, how do you recognise it? Oh. I said, well, in your current level of awareness, I'll agree with you. But see, when you die to this default level of identity, you become unrecognizable to yourself, right? So for individuals to become unrecognizably transformed, for organizations to be unrecognizably transformed, which is required at the moment, because we can't go back to same old, same old, is that you've got to go looking to be confronted, go looking to be uncomfortable, go looking to be resistant. Every single person who's achieved anything of a supreme level, elite athletes and so forth, peak performance, they are 
comfortable with the uncomfortable. They are comfortable with being resistant. They are comfortable with getting, confronting the bejesus out of ourselves. There are two contexts to everything, empowered, con um, empowered and disempowered, right? So I'm not talking about disempowered confrontation, resistance and uncomfortability. I'm talking about empowered confrontation, resistance and uncomfortability. Most people get off the court, can't win the game if you get off the goddamn court. So you've got to do the inner work. So when you think about the CEO and the executive team, right, at the moment, healing is such an unknown uh, quantity within executive boards around the world. I'm standing for healing as a prerequisite because here's the deal. I didn't design it, but in every organization you have people. That's the one common denominator and everything stems from childhood. When I work with a CEO, they'll say to me, Sally, why wouldn't I come to see you about my business? Are you talking to me about my childhood? I've got zero interest in dragging up somebody's past. But I tell you what, we've got a lot of little boys, little girls running businesses and most of them haven't done the work because they're used to being in control. They're now being forced into having to look at themselves. Now, if you've got a CEO and eight people usually on a board, and if they haven't done the work, that has an impact on the whole. So to be able to understand what healing is, the power of healing, to be able to ensure that the executive actually do the inner work, mastering the inner game. How many books do we need to read that say, be careful what you think, your thoughts create your reality? Well, they do. And we don't understand the psyche because we're doing looking good the majority of the time, especially at that level, because if anybody thought that we were experiencing anything of a mental health issue at that executive level, be, you know, would be judged. Stigmatization exists. We need to be supported in this new environment that we're going into, specifically at that level. So one of the mantras I live by and part of what I educate people on is what you're thinking forward in the game. If it's not, don't think it. Is what you're saying forward in the game. If it's not, don't say it. Is what you're doing forward in the game. If it's not, don't do it. And in who you're being on a day-to-day -day basis, is that forward in the game? If it's not, don't be that. That trains you at a high degree of integrity. So I'm talking about empowered cultures, let alone don't even get me on the subject of KPI empowered cultures. Most people in organizations tolerate not even adhering to KPIs. What the hell is the point of having them? Yeah, so at this uh, leadership masterclass, I'm really wanting to look at some of the mindset mastery pieces, not only on how do you change, how do you sustain change, and I'm interested in exploring this whole bullshit around KPIs because most organizations uh, have a disempowered KPI culture, more so now than ever. And what would it be like to transcend, not just transform, but transcend that environment such that we don't only meet our targets, but we bloody well exceed them. So I'm interested in um, exploring those topics and um, really enjoying um, or going to enjoy seeing who actually shows up on the day to dance with us in this, in this conversation. Yeah, and and from, yeah, and, and that's, that's kind of the point too, is that you're trying to make the comfortable, uncomfortable, or how did you say it? Com the uncomfortable, comfortable? Well, there's two contexts. It's empowered confrontation, empowered yeah. resistance, empowered uncomfortability. It's not, you gotta stay on the goddamn court. The one thing that people don't talk about when you're committed is resistance. You mm. know, dragging your sorry ass out of bed at five o'clock in the morning, the first thing that's gonna come up is resistance. People who are trained as marathon runners and all the rest of it, that there is there is resistance. They want to bloody turn over and go back to sleep, but they know how to embrace the resistance and keep taking the action, right? Um, peak performance is a bullshit term at a level because we give lip service to it because we um, sabotage. You know, sabotage comes with the human territory and it's tolerated. That's the other thing I'd love to explore on the day is that there's a high level of toleration within business. What would it be like if you identified everything in business that you tolerated? And what would your life look like if you didn't tolerate anything that wasn't working? <laughs> <laughs> you, you remind me of the drill sergeant in boot camp, Sally, that, you know what? I learned a hell of a lot of stuff that didn't make sense. And it was fantastic. <laughs> no, thank you. It, wa it was that transformation that really we a lot of us need and we need to understand so um no thank you for that and thank you for explaining that uh does anybody else want to comment or lee do you want to kind of talk on your on sort of answer to the question as well in terms of what can we do now today i think what i'm experiencing is the attempt by leaders to get back to business you know, we, 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 so much has been disrupted, so much has been un 
unearthed and changed and we've pivoted. I think businesses have pivoted so many times, they, they're going in circles now. And and mm -hmm. so there's this longing to to just, you know, stick to stick to our knitting, get back to basics, do what we need to do. And so there's almost this um desire to to keep going where we've gone because that's what we know. And in that uh, natural need and desire, what seems to be missing is empathy. And it's, it's me, and, and it's just realizing that as much as we all want think life to go back to normal, or we want things to be settled, or we want to have some direction, that the reality is, and I'm, I'm seeing it over and over again in the businesses that I'm working with, People on the ground are, have got family members who have been sick, are currently ill, are in hospital, have died. And so that's just at the level of, of dealing with COVID. And they are trying to put that in a box so that they can do the work. And this pull, the stretch between what I need to do for work and how I'm coping with life is just getting further and further apart. And because we're working at home or because we're working in small environments, uh, that coping or that needing to get on with things is, is I'm dependent on me. I don't necessarily have the same support that I might have had with my colleagues or even with my boss or my boss's boss. And so this understanding, and, and I'm thinking about this, not just of small businesses, medium businesses, corporate businesses, I'm working with multinationals. And this is exacerbated even more because now you have a head office sitting in Europe who's at a completely different place and stage of what is happening. South Africa is at a completely different stage and place and the, the requirements are coming down the line, hard line, because we've got to get back to business. And people here are just feeling, uh, you know, they don't want to say it because they've got to hold on to their jobs. But wow, it's tough. So leaders, I know empathy is an overused word, but I think it is an underutilized skill underutilized skill yeah no definitely i agree and also yeah how we're trying to to manage that and how we're trying to express it as as well we there's we shouldn't be pushing it out of the way <laughs> we should be increasing it uh as well um thank you lee uh trevor you're next what do you want to kind of comment on what lee said or just kind of start on your own thread too no, you know what, um, look, I think everyone has got important points from different perspectives from different locations around the world, which is absolutely critical. And and the thought for me, uh, as both Sally, Lee, and, and also Scott was talking, um, and there are three of them, so you can see my, uh, uh, my numbers game when I say both and I bring in three, um, I have a problem here, but the clue. Uh, to leadership for me currently is in in the big C, the C in C-suite. And when Sally was talking about KPI, uh, I suddenly thought, you know what, what, what about a big idea? Why not change it to CPI, Sally? And, and maybe on the day, you know, just one new idea in a current scenario might kickstart something new. And maybe uh, instead of key performance indicators, we look for change performance indicators and, and what capability the C-suite has uh, to actually understand the need for change, both internally and externally. And, and I must say, I spend a lot of time, I have an eye not only on here, but I, I'm watching TV stations all around the world to see what's going on. And, and really, this big C seems to come out big all the time, and it creates stress. Uh, in leadership right now, will my company last over the next 18 months? Do I run an airline industry? Uh, do I run an events business? Anything allied to those type of businesses? Can they be wiped out? I mean, uh, you know, look at Sydney. I, I look at you guys in New Zealand. 
Washington. I mean, you have one or two or three COVID cases and it's an immediate lockdown. Man, if you were living in Johannesburg, and obviously we play better rugby than you guys uh, there in New Zealand, um, you know, uh, if you had a couple of thousand cases like this, you guys would be out of business for the next five years instantly like this. But the C for me. Uh, stands for things that we've also got to look at externally. And that is, what about the big factors that are on the go worldwide? Climate change, right? COVID is obviously a big one because that introduced um, the conflict uh, that came out of that, which is the direction that Scott was actually going down. Uh, comfort within an organization. <laughs> you've got to make yourself uncomfortable, but then you've also got to understand uh, that your folk are uh, uncomfortable within the environment. And then there's crisis, there's chaos. We had the looting here in South Africa two, three weeks ago, which completely wiped out uh, 167 warehouses. Who had planned for that? Um, so for me, in that big sea, I'm already thinking, what have I learned from last week's little video presentation to this, that maybe the big C is about focusing on contingency uh, and how you bring that into every element of your C-suite and who actually takes responsibility for that. Maybe it's all in the, in the C-suite. Maybe C stands for serious. For serious. And, and you can see even my dog agrees with me, so I'm going to mute you mean cereal? S serious. <laughs> I think he meant serious. S cereal. I, I think he meant serious, but I was wondering whether oh, if okay. he actually it's eating your cereal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. No, that, that that's those some really good points there, Trevor, and and trying to understand how. Oh, hopefully we didn't lose them, Trevor. You can come back whenever you want. Um, <laughs> Uh, we can continue on the conversation um, around that. So, so Scott, what what about yourself? Like, what do you see as sort of the, not necessarily the cure, but the understanding of, of what we can do here to to overcome some of these challenges? Because as Trevor pointed out, there there's a lot of them, and I think maybe that's where a lot of leaders are feeling that overwhelm. Is like, do we have to deal with all of them, or how do we kind of simplify? How do we kind of uh, strategize so it is a little bit easier. What do you think? Well, yeah, all of the above. It's, it's a long conversation. Uh, but number one is you need to learn to recognize uh, conflicts before they happen. Uh, the, the whole concept of conflict is is, is just being cranked up a, a big notch now. It's become like the birthday cake. And, you know, you get the birthday cake and happy birthday. And then you blow out the candles and you go, yeah. And then suddenly the candles start lighting up again. You go, what the hell? I just blew them out. Uh, two years ago, you blew out the candles. The candles were out. Done. Right. Problem solved. We'll move on to the next problem. Now you blow out the candles. Another bloody candle pops up and that starts to light. You go, I just blew this out. And then you start blowing them all out and they all come up again. This is what conflict is like. And we have to start understanding. And before we could just kind of, leaders could be good and they could they, they could stop it temporarily and they could alleviate some of these concerns. But these this polarity is systemic. It's not going to change. People are not going to change their views. Uh, and leaders need to understand how to handle that from a cycle. They've got to crank up their understanding of psychology to a whole new level. They've got to be, they've got to understand how to be able to handle their ability to take action within um, an environment, do it gently but firmly in a whole new level. And the people around me at this masterclass are masters of this. They know how to do that. Sally, goodness gracious, if anyone knows how to handle this, it's Sally, Lee as well, everybody. But we have to remember, guys, the old paradigm has gone. We have to create a new way of dealing with things because those that birthday cake is going to, you're never going to blow out those candles, guys, unless you do something differently. And you're going to spend the rest of your life as a leader blowing out candles until you've no breath left in your body. Love it. Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic metaphor. <laughs> Let's just Scott, pause and think about that. I always yeah. remember, sorry, I'll always remember yeah. that picture. That is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Because, <laughs> yeah, if we keep trying to blow them out, we're going to lose our breath and we're going to pass out, right? <laughs> yeah. So how, how, do we, how, do we, how do we blow the candles out then, Scott? <laughs> yes, yeah, Sally, how do we blow the candles out? <laughs> Trevor, Lee, well, how do we blow those candles out? 
<laughs> I'm just the guy who comes up with the analogies. <laughs> Don't look at me for solutions. What do I look like? Yeah. I'm the identifier of the problem, and then I hand it over to you. Yeah, this, let, let's let the smart people do that. Um, yeah. yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, Go I'm going to throw in a point to me because I had to be cut short. And and uh, what stands out for me is I wonder how many control freak leaders would have would have absolutely freaked if a little dog had to have uh, gone yapping in their controlled meeting that they wanted to have. The world has completely changed. Uh, and that's where empathy actually comes in as well. Um, but how do you blow those out? <laughs> have you seen my cheeks? They like this because I've been blown for the last 50 years. Um, uh, as the world changes, <clears throat> nothing actually changes. Uh, it's just what have you got currently that allows your deep experience to actually add to what's happening right now that you you actually know how to maneuver when those rocks jump, jump up in front of you. Yeah, and that's that's really what we need to do is we need to take all these experiences these metaphors these stories these real life stuff that's in you know next door or out the door or whatever and actually apply those and, and really fundamentally i think that's what the the wisdom's leadership masterclass is all about correct me if i'm wrong is is, yeah, is giving the people the tools and the toolkits and the strategies to be able to do that as well yeah. um so i really kind of want to just wrap up we've been doing this for mm -hmm. for 30 minutes so thank you everybody for um contributing sally do you want to just give us a quick little rundown to wrap us up in terms of what exactly is this uh wisdom's leadership masterclass love to um just before i do <laughs> um uh over and above a viral pandemic we've got a fear pandemic going on uh fueled i think a lot by the media and uh, fear pre-COVID was one thing, but now, because um, we live in a quite a disassociated society, and now we're being forced to associate. Uh, so I call it SSD, serious significancy and drama. Um, every single um, person in an organization is a human being and there's certain things that come with the human territory. And that is we all have an individual default identity. You get those identities into a collective, every single organization has a default level of identity within the organization nine times out of ten it's undistinguished that is hindering your ability to not only produce results but also sustain results which is where i specialize so i believe that part of what i want to facilitate on the day is to light the energy up and uh, uh because obviously if you are in that quagmire of serious significancy and drama it is very difficult to be able to see the wood for the trees so we're going to have a lot of fun on the 23rd of September. And uh, our main target is leaders, decision makers within organizations, uh, those that are wanting to uh, be able to leverage uh, the caliber. There's about 170 years between us all um, at that leadership uh, consultancy level. Um, and it would be great, you know, if you're wanting to bring your executive teams, that would be great as well, more the merrier. Um, so it's going to be in Perth time. Uh, given that we are all situated in and around the world. Um, and it is a full day. Uh, I'm the lead facilitator uh, and the godfather, my mate Trev here. Uh, we're going to be opening the day. And I've had the luxury of being able to uh, listen to all of the individual speakers. And, you know, I've been in the speaking space for over 30 years and I've heard some speaking in my time and am blown away by the content of what each of these individual speakers will be sharing on the day. Uh, all really diversified, all really different, all great value. Um, so each speaker will have the opportunity to speak and then there'll be a Q&A session after each uh, speaker. And then, as I said before, I'll be facilitating a two hour live coaching um, experience. Uh, there's nothing more powerful than witnessing a real time transformational in group. You'll be able to obviously meet the other people that are actually attending and being able to cross leverage their experience. Everybody has experiences. Um, so we're really excited. Uh, obviously, every day we lose the scene, we're losing it at the other end. The sooner you book, the sooner you're going to be able to secure your space. Uh, we all obviously will have to cap it uh, depending on the numbers. Um, because although we are interested in having a large group attend, we are also interested in personalized attention and also creating an intimate environment into me UC. Um, so we're excited about uh, those that resonate with what it is that we are um, organizing here. And it is a leadership masterclass. So it ain't for the faint hearted. Uh, we will be going deep and we're deep diving for an entire day. And there's nothing we can't handle between the collective. Um, so you can bring in 
uh, whatever it is that you want on a personal or professional nature. And what we will guarantee is not, that not only will we exceed your, meet your expectations, we will exceed them. That's guaranteed. Love it. Thank you, Sally. Appreciate that. Um, and everybody who wants, who would like to find out some more, uh, I've got the website uh, on the bottom of there and I'll actually post it in the comments as well. But it's uh, wisdoms123.com slash GLMC for Global Lead Leadership Master Class as well. So thank you everybody uh, for joining us today. Thank you for all our amazing uh, speakers, Sally, Scott, uh, Lee, and Trevor. Uh, if you are watching this in replay, please ask your questions. We'll still be able to go around and answer some of your questions, either related to the topic of birthday candles, blowing out your birthday candles or not, <laughs> or about what we can do as leaders uh, to, to kind of help us get through these, uh, these tough stages, not just today, but tomorrow as well. So once again, thank you everybody for joining in in the conversation. Would love to hear from you and uh, we will see you guys online. Thank you. Thanks, Joel.